Okay, so I uh, here I'm going to make an addition to the topic 12 kinetics, and particular focus on the more complex mechanism, uh, consecutive elementary reaction, and then uh, there are some frequent uh, topic that being asked in many uh, GRE exams. Uh, the first topic is that this is an example. Uh, this is a steady state approximation. So I need to, I briefly talk about it, but I'm going to talk um, a little bit more in detail. And consider this, A goes to B, B goes to C. So you view this one as a consecutive uh, reaction. Uh, and A goes to B, B is an intermediate, and then, then the, eventually you form the product, which is uh, the C. The steady state approximation means essentially dt d b is zero, where the b is your intermediate. So there are different notations. Sometimes the people using i as an intermediate. At any rate, here. Uh, this is where you need to find out where essentially the concentration of B is essentially constant at steady state. Right? So this is where you have to look at that. And then now you're going to looking at A goes to B, B goes to C, and there are two different rates. And this is an analogy about using the highway versus the local small road. It is a good analogy that you can see. So there is a K1 and K2. So this is more like a highway. So fast reaction. A lot of cars are moving in from A city to B city. And then the, but the, from B city to C city, uh, that's the more like a congestion. So a lot of cars are actually stuck in the city called B, right? So that's the, that's the case where your K1 is bigger than K2. And if that's, that's what you see here, you probably see the accumulation of the B, just like shown up here, okay? At some point, that you see the significant time window where your traffic congestion is showing up. Eventually, the B goes away, and then an A goes away, and then you reach the, the product is going to be dominant. But that's the case for uh, in showing up in case one here. Case two is the uh, second one. Right? So from, from New York City to Albany, let's say B is in Albany, there is a very small road. But from the small road, uh, the B, uh, we want to go to Montreal, and that's a very super highway there. So in that case, is, uh, the K1, K2, this case is this other way. K2 is much bigger than K1. And so then, then the, this B intermediate, there's not much things accumulating over there. So those are the two scenarios. And the steady state is more like this is a case is more likely to happen and uh, because the, the important concept is we want to have a B steady state, uh, B is a constant numbers and this constant number is a very very small so uh, small numbers and then it is not a significant kind of existence in the in the in the this chains of reaction A is to B, B is to C so having said this one in the steady state, uh, what you what you anticipate is concentration of your intermediate over concentration of your product is going to be smaller than one. So B is not a, a major factor here, and so that's the, that's a consideration. So having said that, uh, this is a steady state. Uh, this is a figure that is going to be related to represent the best use for the com component B uh, is a steady state approximation is being used. You, your levels uh, reach some constant numbers, so that's the, what's the key. And also the, this ratio, A is still, uh, this is still 
minor component okay so smaller concentration and that's what this one fulfills over there I'm gonna revisit this one so don't 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 worry about it and the first one that I want to talk to you about is uh, what is called the elementary reaction so this time we talk about kinetics and then I want to make sure that well this is the really the uh, uh, they make a clear distinction about uh, what is known as an elementary reaction and this is a probably in your chem 2 class and you talk about kinetics this is how how people write first order reactions and uh, that is an elementary reaction so when you see that a decomposed to b the concentration a is a one and uh, depend uh, determine the rate of polymerization uh, kinetic uh, rate law uh, and so therefore they can write this equation but what this elementary reaction means and this is a really the as it is is an elementary reaction those are the fundamental reaction unit that a decomposed into the p and so on uh, if I write the equation somebody write an equation say a goes to b and then form the product but now the the way that the a is disappearing is uh, this uh, this is a if this is a reaction rate and somehow this one was turns out to be reaction rate a to the half and this is I don't know I, I'm just giving you the some some reason so this is a this one telling me that a and the B there is a collision between these two to form the product P so this is an idea that we can uh, understand the mechanism based on this uh, experimental observation if we were to the, the, the rate law uh, like that but if somebody uh, do the experiment and then they found out uh, essentially the rate law uh, looks like that what that really means is it's not simply A is colliding with a B to form the product it is uh, this is reaction is non elementary also known as I guess a complex reaction okay. so, so therefore uh, you you we do not have any prior knowledge whether the reaction is a elementary or non elementary reaction so therefore we need to find out uh, what's the uh, determine the the order of the rate law and then to figure out okay so well, enough said that the elementary reaction is a really the fundamental building block to for the many series of reaction may be elementary but that leads to essentially complex reactions as a as a, essentially this is a net product of this one here is a net reaction Right? So this is a net reaction. Okay, so topic number two is a consecutive elementary reaction. This is probably the most uh, kind of a well-visited topic because it is just enough to be uh, complex and but give you a good kind of an understanding of uh, the description of the reaction. So uh, this is a case where uh, A goes to intermediate goes to product and then k a and k b is a rate constant so each step is a first order a reaction and the each step is elementary okay so therefore we have a prior knowledge to see that each component each uh, direction of the rate law is something that is well defined and this is uh, essentially uh, nuclear reaction the, this is uh, the decay of uh, atoms into uh, different products so uh, for there are three different types of rate law uh, that I can establish so the first one is I am just going to focus on number one okay so as far as A is concerned they are going to be uh, related to uh, they are going to be used to produce the intermediate 
But what the A's concentration is concerned, uh, the arrow matters here is this one. Okay. So that's, that's how build up the concentration uh, rate law. And then what, what also is typically known is uh, typically in the beginning, concentration of A is known as A0 at time is 0. So this is uh, known as initial concentration. Okay, we call it IC. So this one we have uh, you uh, we have discussed in the, my lectures. Uh, you can solve it. This differential equation find out uh, that is a relationship, and that's going to be how, uh, as far as the time is concerned, the A, which is a, in, in this is an A naught, and the overall concentration of A is a decay function. They they destined to to decay away as time goes on, and the, the rate constant, how fast they drop, how slow they drop, is a, is a, is governed by Ka, which is a decay constant, I guess. Okay, so the is the problem is getting more challenging for us to establish the relationship for the intermediate. So let me write this one once more uh, the, for the intermediate. So the second one. As far as the intermediate is concerned, they are being produced from Ka, but they are being uh, Kb is is related to the way that the the disappearance or the how this is being consumed away. Right. So this is a positive term, and this is a negative term and the concentration goes A and P. So I guess I have to, I just write write this one once more here. So the rate of change of intermediate, this is uh, the production, so this will be a positive contribution, and then this is a consumption, which is a negative contribution. And that's what you can write it here. And this is, uh, uh, to solve this equation, now we have spe pay a special attention to the, this concentration of intermediate, right? And anything else should be a, a time-dependent, well-defined well function. And we, we are so certain of it, because if you look at here, this concentration of A, right here, there can be, you can just plug that in. And once you write this equation down, and the whole equation that you see here is just, uh, will be something looks like, remember that dy dt plus uh, ay equals this function of time. So, well, maybe I can, I can just simply say that that's not T, but uh, I can just say D, this is a differential equation. So that's the form that you know, X is a time here, Y is a concentration of intermediate, and this is a first order uh, non-homogeneous differential equation, and uh, you can use an integrating factors, and also the one thing that I know is uh, initial condition for i is zero at time equal zero. So, so they're using that as a, my initial condition, and I can essentially come to our, come to this complex answers. So this this answer is a really generic. It takes a long time, and then you need a. This is a, something that integrating factor in, the, in your differential equation. This is a first order uh, non homogeneous ordinary differential equation. Okay? And then the, in the integrating factor is something that is very useful. You might want to revisit this book, book to, to solve it. But that's, this is an anyway, that's the, the answer for this equation. And this one, 
Now, if I if I draw this one, I just have to uh, show you show you here. This is a time. X X is time, but in the normalized uh, by the K A constant, it shows up and comes down. So this is a case where uh, where K A value is much bigger than K B. So A New York City to Albany is a lot superhighway. Albany being intermediate, but from Albany to Montreal is a very small road, and that's the, to the Montreal. So there's a enough accumulation of the cars in the middle city, intermediate city, uh, from New York City, Albany to Montreal in Canada, and so therefore in this case is there is a essentially accumulation of well, concentration enhancement at certain time period uh, of, of the intermediate forest. The accumulation of car or congestion of the car in the in the middle city. Okay, so that's that's how this uh, diagram looks like. So if I just draw the very quick diagram here once again because of that. I'm kind of anticipating this one goes up and goes away, and because this is a two kind of the exponential function, one is going up, one is coming down, and it is a combination of those two two variations. One one equation goes up, the other one equation goes down. As a combination, you will, you will see this uh, graph looks like that. Okay, so that's an intermediate concentration. Initially, you have a zero concentration at time zero, and you have a peak out, and then you eventually goes away. The last component is a product, and if you're looking at the, the original concept here, right, as far as a product is concerned here, is a product, if you just write it, and that's being produced from KB. So that's the only, only term that matters for the products. So. Therefore, I can simply write it. The equation just looks like that. And since I know my answer for intermediate here, so which is just, a, if you look at that, that is just a bunch of constant and time-dependent functions. So I can put that in just like that. And once you put that in, you you're pretty much can solve this equation by integrating this because essentially separation of variable dp right so 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 if i rewrite this one this equation is this differential equation is now dp is nothing but kb times i times dt and that is just a constant so therefore this one is uh, you do the integration on that on both sides, and then uh, you you will see that this one, this side is becomes p minus p naught, which is initially you have a zero, so that will be a, just a p, and then this will be the concentration. Uh, okay, so that that can be a, another way to solve this, but there is a. Uh, kind of clever way to kind of make these questions uh, easy to be answered, which is the understanding the conservation of the molecule, right? The, the statement when people say A goes to in intermediate, goes to the product, the number of molecules or number of atoms in, in the isotope decay, they stay the same. So therefore, uh, the total number of molecule in the beginning is same as at any stage of the time the concentration of those three in the reaction mixture will be the same so having said that do you remember that we already calculate this we know exactly calculate that and this is just a constant so therefore 
I can have a backdoor way, which is a, a pre product concentration is nothing but A naught minus A minus concentration of I. So this is a how actually people uh, use in the textbook to, to get this solution out. But eventually what this really means is if you're looking at the way that how the, the equation is being written, uh, this is a this is this is a decay function and also uh, the ka uh, is also the decay function so these are the all decay functions and once you have those two values um, you will have an A concentration goes down just like that. Just like this. Whereas uh, this one is now the pressure of the, the product reach certain certain numbers. So these are the two di different decay functions but the difference in the level and uh, depending on the choice size values of A and B you might end up getting these uh, values here. Okay. Uh, oh, when I look at here, this is actually I sh I should have said here to you, uh, here this is a this both are both decay functions, but one is a faster decay, the other one is a slower decay, and as a as a consequences, I think the, I'm I'm sorry that I I think that I kind of make this one is a not not correctly explained. One is a faster decay. The other is slow decay, so there's a moment that where you are seeing some a little peak mountains over there. And uh, these are the three equations, and then I am going to make a project. Uh, for making, plotting this three plot using those three equations, this one, this one, and this equations. Uh, following that, and that's, that will be used uh, for the uh, Excel project for this semester.